<laughs> oh, it gets disorienting, like an astronaut being sideways all the time and having to move my head down. But you can see me, and I wish I could see you. Anyway, I'm going to show you, as you can see on my screen, <laughs> that's funny, it's acoustic piano. It's a set of different sampled pianos, I believe four of them, three grands and an upright, and it's part of the Native Instruments Complete 5 Bundle, which is how I got it. I often get questions of what does Torley recommend, I'll move back here a bit, what do I recommend to get start get started making music? And that, of course, I want to ask you, what do you want to do? There are a lot of possibilities. And if you want to do something like I do, <laughs> whoop, then by all means, have a, an affordable keyboard controller. You can have one with more knobs. I have extra knob boxes and sliders. Let me pull one out here, like this Korg Nano Control. But I am big on really not having a lot of hardware patch difficulties because that was my youth. I had hundreds of cables. It was a pain to recall settings. I like having a nice powerful computer Coupled with this and some software like Native Instruments Complete 5, which I actually got with Core 2, the hardware controller. I wish I could pull it up here, but the, the cable is too short. And I don't want to displace this webcam because it's a bit hard to get repositioned. Perhaps they'll show in a future episode. But anyway, yeah, Core, K O R E 2, if you Google and look forward to that. So it was a very nice bundle. And my main sequencer is which I intend to get into more with electronic productions, very multi-layered ones, is Ableton Live. So buy that, and if you have a decent recorder for vocals and mobile stuff like this, Zoom H4n, then you're pretty much all set. You can always add more sound libraries, and there's lots of freebies on the net and resources you get into. But given the choice between learning a lot of things very shallow and one thing really, really deep. I recommend picking some favorite instruments, things that you really gel with. Like I know acoustic pretty much inside out because I've used it for a long time and really, really get studious about that, passionate, and just keep working with it day by day. That's how progress is made. So let me move closer again and I'm gonna take you on a tour. So you have these three different pianos, of course. And we are, and the fourth one is an upright. I didn't mean to not count you. And this is cool because you can place it in a reverberant space. Now note this isn't intended as a complete comprehensive review. It's a fun, quick tour to show you why I like it. So it's represented by this 3D nice graphic. So when we take that away, we'll compare. Okay, they hear the reverb tail. Now let's take that away. It's dry. Compare that to... Which is a lot more convenient in today's day and age of technology than having to lug a piano. <laughs> and it's very cool, you can control the lid. Unfortunately, the, the graphic doesn't match that. It would be fun if it did. So if you move the lid down, it sounds more muffled. If you can hear that and we have different there's a lot of options like different kinds of tuning set it to quarter tones it sounds weird something for your next horror movie you can also change equalization you probably know what that is make a bass you can customize things further the pan field and that's pretty much it one thing of note set this about middle or make sure it doesn't get into the red because when it does it doesn't necessarily just clip it it compresses and it sounds really ugly and i'd have to say overall this is one of acoustics weakness it doesn't seem to do the big pounding rack man of chord things that sharply as others I've, I've played around with a bit it's easier to get easier recordings from other sample pianos i've tried overall it's very nice so we have different okay have a bunch of choices here so we were in the Beckstein Bach. We can choose the, well, that one's kind of a silly one too, but there are extra overtones. And oh, by the way, there are, are pedal noises in, in addition to key release noise. Like when I release the key, let's see if I can hear this because I'm going to move this up and move this up. So when I release the pedal or press it down, okay, see, I'm pressing down on the pedal with my foot. I love showing cause and effect because you, since you can't be here with me in person, this is the next best way. So. You hear that clunk? Okay. So let's get this into a nice concert hall and let's play some piano.
So like that. It's got a more of a sharper tone. The real gem really is a Steingraber, which we're going to get to. But you have a Bolzendorf <laughs> here too. And I was never sure why this one was called a Gregorian. Each one has their own characteristics, of course. And I like having different pianos because sometimes we want an Elton John kind of rock copying style. Other times we want something very deuce and very sinister even. So this one's kind of more uh, regal. Sample pianos are one of those areas that, of course, you have other technologies like physically, physical modeling, which I'm very interested in, piano tech, for instance. And people will argue about which one's the best. Well, there are just so many choices. So it's nice to have not a dazzling array so broad that it blinds you, but you can pick and choose some key instruments that you're intimately familiar with to reinforce the point I made earlier. <laughs> And do note, I disclaim, this isn't the total raw sound because in addition to being compressed through the internet, I have sweetened it some with some of the dynamic processors. That's what I use, standard limiter and the multiband processor in Ableton Live to give it a bit of a pumped up sound. So if you're looking for true classical authenticity, this isn't, this isn't really for you, but I'm aimed at more rock style, more modern production that has classical influences perhaps, but that isn't the sum total of the beast. That one could do well with some banging chords though. Okay, so let's move on from Concert Grand to the Steingrabler. It's my favorite, the Steingrabler Wunderkain. <laughs> You'll see why this is my favorite. And I've done a lot of piano improvisations with this one. A lot of my recordings, it has a very telltale sound. Okay, there it is. It's in the jazz club. I like just pointing. Look at that window next door. Okay. Okay, so say we make it say we make it more dull here. Let's move the EQ so it dips. Uh, let's see if I can get it more down. And the lid too. Let's make the bass stronger. Okay, something like that. There we go. Now we can get into the mood. Checking the reverb. Sorry for the glitch there.
<laughs> I like a little whimsy like that. I think I'm gonna end it one way I end it almost like that, but with a twist. <laughs> So that is the basics of acoustic piano, really easy to use. It has a recorder of its own. Unfortunately, pressing the keys here doesn't show them illuminated, but this is if you don't have a sequencer already recording you. You can make your own presets, like I made my totally grand. You can increase the number of voices, which of course would increase, I believe, CPU and memory consumption. So this is my master stroke. It may be said a bit too loud. Let me move it down here. Let's place it in the cathedral. I made this to record a lot of very bold sounding things. Sometimes I set the fine tune to 444 hertz just because I like that number. Oh, 0.44 too. <laughs> so it's a bit off the standard. But who gives a damn about standards when you can do wonderful creative things? <laughs> okay. So it's a regal. I love left hand swirly swashbuckles. See, towards the end, it, it distorted a bit there, more than I would care for, even with the dynamics processing. So you do have to be careful about that sort of range when you're treating pianos. But overall, really, really beautiful stuff. Check it out, acoustic piano. Uh, you can get it standalone, but I got it as part of the NI Complete 5 bundle. They're gonna be releasing a version six eventually. I'm looking forward to what that holds. And Complete has all sorts of stuff from this acoustic piano to electric pianos to a lot of synth sounds, analog ones, unconventional synthesis. It has a sampler contact, just loads and loads. There are literally, I think something like 10,000 over that amount of sounds, plus a lot of variations with the core module. So more than you can, I think more than most producers can really play every single one. But sometimes I like to do that. I like to go through a whole bank and play a riff on each one. Sort of like what I've been showing you here, but with way more sounds. It's just a universe. What we can do nowadays and even with laptops getting more powerful you can have a mobile studio you can make some beautiful piano sounding recordings in the road and some people they associate it the piano samples they have a bad rap because they look at someone playing it on a keyboard like this and that is cognitive dissonance but i challenge you sometimes just to listen to the music itself and i process it more than most people might perhaps at times but you cannot turn those enhancements off if you want to get a more naturalistic sound this is just examples of <laughs> how I fancy using it. So anyway, yes, acoustic piano. This is Torley. Thanks for watching. One more to send this off, like piano cat. Mm -hmm.